Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here. Before we get started, let me give the shout outs out of the way. Today's shout out goes to Arkin Tube. Arkin Tube was the first to say first in one of my recent videos, and thus wins this shout out. So, what do I got for you today? This is a neat one here. This is the Lee Idea Idea 7. What's so special about the Idea 7? Well, it's another, remember I said this is going to be the year of optical flow. I've been showing a lot of optical flow flyers and also cheap GPS flyers. And indeed, this is an inexpensive GPS drone that's just come out by uh, the idea. Now, what's special about it? Um, again, it is a full, or it is a GPS drone, but notice that it is also a folding drone to make it uh, more portable. Um, you can open up the arms like so, extend them, you know, from a compact, uh, easy to carry uh, in your pocket <laughs> type of drone. And then once you get out somewhere, just expand it and go flying. Now, what else is special about it? It has a 720p HD camera. Unfortunately, if you notice, look closely though, there is no micro SD card slot. So this records its video directly to your phone. And the way it does that is through this antenna here using Wi-Fi, uh, 2.4 gigahertz of Wi-Fi to be exact. Uh, Although it's using 2.4 gigahertz, uh, most phones are capable of 2.4 gigahertz. So this is not a 5G Wi-Fi flyer. So you don't have to worry about uh, compatibility with your phone. It should work with your phone. And I noticed I got a, a thumbprint here on the lens. Let me clean that off a bit. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. Um, what else? Notice the look of it. Uh, it's very similar to uh, DJI Spark, I would have to say. You know, it's they're going for that look there, but it is not a Spark. Keep that in mind. It is just a cheap toy drone, so don't go comparing this to the Spark. It's not <laughs> other than it kind of looks like one. Um, the battery for it is a little 7.4 volt, uh, 900 milliamp per hour uh, proprietary battery. So you, we're going to need to use the batteries from the idea for this particular quadcopter. So putting it back in there. Um, let's go over its controller. And it has a nice controller. I do like this controller um, look and feel of it. But you got your on-off switch here. You have a re automatic return to home right there. You have headless mode here, automatic takeoff, and automatic landing buttons here. Uh, emergency stop button here. These are trim buttons for pitch. And I don't know if this is yaw, <laughs> I'm guessing. Um, you can change between the rates, between beginner and intermediate, uh, high and low rate by that button there. Photos, you can start take a photo by pressing that button there. You can start and stop video by pressing this button here. And this does have circle me mode, which you activate by pressing this button here. In addition to circle me mode, this also has other advanced flight modes like follow me and waypoints that you have to use fly uh, using its app. So let's fire this up, open its app, and let's take a look at it. Okay, I turned it on here. Now, the one thing, this being a GPS uh, quadcopter, as with all GPS, you should uh, calibrate it at least once before your first flight for your local area. To put this into uh, or compass calibration mode, you bring this stick down to the left and this stick up and to the right. And that should put it into uh, compass calibration mode. And what you do is, notice all lights are blinking simultaneously. You rotate it horizontally until only one set of lights start to blink. Hold on. Okay, the blue lights in the back are now solid and the uh, red lights are still blinking. And that's when you do your vertical turns, like so, until the, the red lights change. And the red lights are now solid and blue lights are solid. And since all lights are solid, that means we have sufficient satellites also to fly. Now, turning on Oh, the transmitter is on. Uh, let's turn on the app and take a look at the app. Okay, this is the SKGPS app uh, designed for this particular quadcopter. Hitting start. And we do have um, FPV, I can see. Now, notice we got a lot of telemetry information from this particular app. So, this will be interesting to fly. But first off, I'm going to start my camera. Camera is recording. And to start the video, or start the motors, I believe you got to do a down and out. Down and out to start it. And let's hit that automatic takeoff button and see what it does. Going up a bit higher. Let's see how our GPS position hold is working. It seems to be working. Uh, I'm going to get in the picture. Coming over here, coming down a little lower. Now I'm noticing that the Wi-Fi is somewhat uh, laggy. And also I'm seeing some jello. So <laughs> that's... Well, you know, it's, it's an inexpensive drone, so it's going to do that. 
Uh, let's see, I'm trying to. There's a lot of lag, folks. 1001, 1001, 1002. So it's almost two seconds lag. So you're not going to be able to fly this very well. Um, I don't know if you can see that or not. <laughs> fly this very well using uh, FPV. It's going to be mainly for aiming your camera, in other words. But with that in mind, let's take it up and show you the camera. We'll go up higher. And let's go upwind too. And pop it right there. Going up, going up. And up to about 13, 15 meters. And from there, let's just rotate around the area. Slow rotate, slow rotate. That's its camera. I'm flying very early in the morning, so there's going to be a lot of shadows, a lot of contrast right now. Uh, I have to fly early in the morning because it's hot here in the desert. <laughs> it's going up to 113 today, I believe. But let's let's fly it out, Bond. See what type of range we get. I'm going this direction here. I want to do an automatic return to home once we do lose contact with it. Going to, let's see if I can go to the other side of the field. It's... It's got good range, folks. How far out am I? I am at, uh, well, 37 meters going further. Can I make it to the other end of the field? Oh, about 50 meters. There we go. Then it doesn't want to go any further. Here, pushing forward again. It's having, yeah, right about 50, 60 meters. Um, it, it becomes uh, kind of a, uh, erratic. It's um, maintaining, ability to maintain uh, sync or lock on with the transmitter so i'm turning the drone and i'm going to hit the automatic return to home button let's see it do an automatic return to home it's in return mode and let's see how close of a landing it'll do it's doing its automatic return to home I hope that's not where it thinks it's at. Okay, it slows down once it gets close. It does a rapid return until it gets about, I don't know, 10 meters, 20 meters, 10 to 15 meters away, and then it's, in the final portion of its approach is very slow. And let's see it, when it'll start its descent. It's overhead, and now it's doing its descent. Let's see how accurate its return to home is. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Let's see it do its final descent. Slows down there. And does it land? Yes, it does. <laughs> and there's its landing. Okay, let me stop that video. Now, let's try this other advanced features here. Let's do another takeoff again. But this time, let's use the app. Let's see if we can control it with the app. So, um, let's see. Unlocking. If I press the automatic, no unlock. Okay, unlock. I guess I should have uh, opened this with this particular app here. Hold on, folks. We're going to restart it only this time. I'm going to try to fly it with the app only. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't do surround yet. So, let's do take off real quick. Starting the video. Pointing the camera in my direction. And let's hit that surround button. It climbs. It points. It goes over there. And what's it going to do? Let's see here. I press the surround button. It's turning. I'm not sure what it's doing. <laughs> Maybe I gotta start it. Uh, yeah, you gotta start it. It's by moving the stick right or left. Now you can increase the uh, radius of this, I believe, by pushing in or out on the stick. Uh, let's increase the radius by pushing out on the stick. And let's slow it down a bit. It's going a little too fast by moving the stick to the right in the opposite direction of its spinning. So that's the surround feature. It works very well, actually. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised. Okay. And let's stop this around. 
Let's see if we can go into the other advanced features like follow me. Let's try follow me. Is it, it's moving over there. And I just pressed follow me. We are in follow mode. Oh, okay, it's following, except it's not pointed in my direction. <laughs> the camera's not pointed in my direction. Let's turn off follow mode. Follow mode, coming out of follow mode. Let's turn the camera and... Okay, I'm trying to turn the drone. Pushing back. I better land it. Right there. There seems to be some conflict here between the, the controller and the, the app. And now it's locked again, so I should have control back again. Uh, let's take off again then. Stopping the video. Starting the video. Take off. Oops, start the motors. Take off. And it's drifting over there. Bringing it back. Again, yeah, it has some issues there with... I'm going to land it. It has some issues there between being controlled via the app and being controlled via the uh, phone. So what I'm going to do, folks, is restart the quadcopter and use the phone only because I want to try out its advanced features of follow me and um, waypoints if i got time here, if i got battery power. So turning off the drone. And stopping the video and we'll restart it again using the app only so hold on folks okay I, it wants to do a compass calibration before takeoff it won't let itself take off until i finish the compass calibration okay that's the horizontal you gotta do the vertical so keep this in mind folks you're going to need to do a compass calibration each and every time you start it start the drone and that's a i guess a good idea <laughs> okay we should be good to go now let's see if i can unlock the motors down or not. Oh, there we go. And take off. Is it holding its position? It is. Going up a bit higher. And uh, let's see here. I wanted to do follow me before we run out of power here. Follow me is activated. <laughs> and that's its follow me. It's going over there. Goes off to about a distance, a certain distance away from you. <laughs> and then let's see if it actually follows me. Let's go off to the right. It's trying. <laughs> it's trying to follow. Walking over here, walking over here. So that's its follow me. That's right over here. It's turning. So that's follow me. Okay, how about waypoints? Let's go into waypoints here. Uh, waypoint mode. And right now, draw. And actually, I can't get into waypoint mode because I don't have maps. Let's try maps. So we're going to skip waypoints. Waypoint seems to be an issue with this. Going back, and we're going to finish this off with follow me until the battery runs out. Just trying to follow me mode. So, and am I recording? <laughs> I'm recording now, folks. Sorry about that. Let's try it to follow me until the battery runs out. So now it's using the GPS in my phone for the follow me data, you know, um, where to go. Uh, with that in mind, there is some error between the two, and so you see this wobbling caused by the error. What if I walk toward it? Is it going to go away from me? Let's find out. One toward it. And it does. It does seem to be going away from me. But it's actually doing a nice follow me. I am kind of impressed with it. Can I go higher for this follow me? Trying to give it... No. Nope. I guess you got to do that in the settings. There is a settings for the parameters for follow me. What altitude and what distance it's going to be from you. In fact, let me see if I can find those settings. Uh, calibrate accelerator, magnetometer, parameters, yeah. 
height of homework, speed of waypoints. So these are parameters, but I don't see where you can adjust. <laughs> Unfortunately, I guess you can't <laughs> adjust the parameters for follow me. So let's turn off follow me for the remainder of this. We're getting low on battery. I just want you to see it before. Oh, it's still on follow me. Although I turned it off. <laughs> I can't get close to it. Uh, let's see back. Control stick. Okay, can I get close to it now? I selected stick control. There we go. That's better. So, we're going to finish this up here. Um, lights should be blinking here shortly too, but they're not. <laughs> so, we got 17% battery power remaining. It's flying well. I'm using my phone to control it. Um, again, I couldn't get the waypoints uh, to work, unfortunately. I don't know what the issue there with waypoints is, but if I select uh, map mode there, for one thing, <laughs> okay, now I might be able to do it. Let's try it. Hitting the draw. There's one. Let's submit. Will it go to that waypoint? I said, go to waypoint. I better hit return to home. Okay, it's going to the waypoint. Return to home. Return to home. Yeah, let's come back down. And get down fast because our battery's getting low. <laughs> That's why I'm stopping the, the waypoint. I, I was trying to get the waypoint going, but it just didn't seem to want to do such. So let's land it, with, because we are almost out of battery power. I don't want to kill the batteries on this. And yeah, stopping the video. So that is the Lee Idea Idea 7. Very cheap uh, GPS quadcopter um, from Lee Idea with follow me, circle me, and waypoints kind of. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this flight, this quadcopter 101. Sighting out.